I would like to hear a more like holistic like oh, yeah yeah interpretation holistic. of my chart. Good. L l I love that. Thank you for not getting too mired into the weeds because most a lot of people think yeah. that holisticness is great. A couple holistic things about this chart that we're looking at here. First of all, here's a girl who's very strategic. All the arrows <laughs> point to the left. Um, we went over some of the arrows. I, I've done my own podcast on arrows. Um, uh, um, on it's on i forgot where we're at we got kicked off of youtube so we're someplace else um <laughs> yeah but all this leftness means that here is a, a manifester that has to literally identify with the work you're doing you don't leave you don't leave the work you're doing up to chance you know and you know quickly if you do or don't identify with it you suddenly run out of the energy to do the thing if you don't identify you're quickly not in the mood now that mood is a chemistry it's not a mental construct. It's your body warning you. No good. No good. You know, don't like it. Does that sound familiar? Um, a hundred percent. And this is why I love human design because I'm like a hardcore personality junkie. Any quiz, I'll take it. I want to know what pizza I am. Like, give it to me. <laughs> but human That's... design is like a whole other level, and well, stuff like again... this is just like an X-ray. <laughs> I, it's an x-ray it's a great thing and x-ray is a diagnostic tool this is no different it is totally a diagnostic tool this this chart should be on every driver's license it should be in every medical record it should be part of the, the child school thing for school you name it it really should be there for all these things it's going to usurp modern psychology one day when they finally wake up and things start <laughs> here because it's no it's no longer it's not, it's not a belief system. Again, it's a science and, and we see it as we as we experiment with it. Um, another holistic thing is there is this um, split definition. Split definition means one side desperately wants to leap across the void to the other side. And it's always looking to be in partnership with others to hook it up. While at the same time, you're a manifester. You hate having to be in partnership with others to hook anything up. When I say hate, that's relative. You know, it can be an annoyance. You don't necessarily want to. Well, you pick your words, but and that split. Did you ever have you ever looked into the split that's on your chart? No, no. I I haven't. That's one part where I'm not totally like yeah, okay. what you're saying makes sense. But I'm a split um... definition. <laughs> I'm a I'm a split definition. And this when you are a simple when you're split definition, it just means that see the head and the ajna of your chart. They don't connect to the throat. Okay. You got a lot of, okay. Got a lot of that action actually, there. yeah. There's a lot of overthinking going on. <laughs> well, no, you don't overthink. You think. Please um, change that. You no such thing as overthink. You got that defined head. I've got that same configuration in my head center. I got a sixty. I got a sixty-three, a sixty-four, a forty-seven. We don't overthink. We think. It's okay. The mind never shuts off for us. That's okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it would be nice sometimes. <laughs> As you follow your strategy more and you honor your rest cycle more, you'll see where it shuts off. You know, it, it's but it's never supposed to per se. It's always working a, a doubt factory, a confusion factory, a realization factory, an idea factory. These things are yeah. going together, you know, a lot of factories out there. Anyway, yeah, gate uh, gate uh, uh, 11 in your body graph is dying to get to the manifesting part of stimulating everyone. So if you can't stimulate people with your ideas, that's a problem for you. You don't like it. It starts to get annoying. You're trying to, you, you want to. Now you get to know, I'm not always going to stimulate people with the whole concluded story that the storyteller would tell if they have that whole channel. You can start to realize uh, sometimes I'm not capturing the other with whatever the idea is and the idea set I'm trying to stimulate them with. I just have the idea. Just a tea, Danny. We seem to have lost our guest. I think they're going to pop back on when they have a chance. But in this time, what we can do is we can uh, put a link to um, Kara's website. So, Kara, if you don't mind, pop in your link when you have a chance into the chat so everyone can check out your podcast. And now I'm going to put you back on stage. <laughs> Um, what did you, did you catch Sorry. all that? It just like, it, 
it dropped off um like right at the beginning honestly <laughs> when you were talking about i'm trying to remember it, what the last words i heard well were. gate 11 you, gate 11 doesn't connect to gate there is no gate um there's no gate 56 right that's not a problem yeah, yeah. that's a that's just the that's your part of your perfection it only is a problem when the mental functions of your idea factory which are very creative and very abstract see that's the thing you've learned to fear your abstractness because it seems too weird and it's not and so your ideas come flying out of you and the frustration and the things and the agitation comes in when suddenly the other isn't really taking it in because you just haven't found a way to stimulate them with whatever is your abstract notion so here you are i'm looking excited i got this thing i'm ready to share i'm ready to share and part of your incarnation cross demands you share the things you're enthusiastic about. So there you are, enthusiastically dying to share, share, share. And suddenly it doesn't quite come out right. Or it doesn't seem to impact them the way you want it to. And then suddenly you start getting agitated about that. That's not your agitation. That's your not self's agitation. You don't have a gate 56. You're not going to stimulate them all the time. You're not going to really get through as the full storyteller to finish the idea into something. We have a we have a creature, Willie, my new kitty cat. Say hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, how He's cute! He's Willie. He just got here the other day. Mine's, so, mine's right, back Willie? here too. Here you go, honey. We love you, Willie. How cute! Yep, love you, Willie. And he's gonna interrupt <laughs> things. By the way, he may cut me off. Don't you step on this thing, Willie? I'll... Yes. Um. <laughs> so, the next one is you don't have a gate forty three. You have a gate three, uh, 23, right? And gate 23 is, yeah. so what it means is my manifest or body strategically is identified with the things I'm trying to do and I have an explanation for everything. 23 <laughs> explains things. It's very metamorphic. It splits, it's called splitting apart. It splits apart the crazy and puts it into words. This is the voice that says, I know. So here you are and you've got lots of individual channels in your body graph. Those are knowing channels. So here's a manifester that when called to share, which is often, you know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and so you always have this I knowing going on, I, I know going on. And, um, but you don't always know. The concept factory right above it, that gate 43 would then empower is the, 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 the hang on, I gotta move kitty. Sorry, kitty, love you, you're gone. Um, <laughs> is the concept factor coming out of 23 is about insights and it's breakthrough the gate of insights the i ching called it the gate of breakthrough because it's aha aha I, I, you know a sudden knowing that is so potent that you just know and if you only have a gate 43 like me i don't have a gate 23 my split is the gate you have suddenly i know doesn't turn into an explanation you have forms of I know, and the explanations sometimes are scrambled while the confusion factory in your head is putting it all together. That's not a problem. That's Ooh. something for you to wait for. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't, I can't like name off specific examples, no, no. but well, yeah, the whole like weird ideas and like yes. knowing things. That's just the that knowing. <laughs> right and, and so inside that knowing isn't always the putting it together in a way that comes out cogently right up front so allow yourself some time that's all because this these splits are here for a reason they're designed to make you intelligent what do you want to kitty oh get off of that it's gonna get hot come on i was gonna say i'm like oh you had other questions too Let um the, the next running. split the next and you by the way this split is something that you're not going to be in as in tune with as you will the other two splits because it's unconscious that red gate coming off of 23 it's in your unconscious design side it's something you have to come to see as a trait as a characteristic because it's not in your conscious personality side you don't have the easiest act the red stuff we don't have easy access to it's like a tunnel it comes out of nowhere and the black stuff we've lived with because it's our personality side and we're more aware of it. Like the details of gate 62 off the top of your throat. 
You see how you have a gate 62 there? Yes, I was just looking at that. Details, details, details. The knower who's talented and always enthusiastic, as soon as she feels called to network with the others and manifest them and make an impact, I'm keynoting you, has all the details, <laughs> loaded with details. She knows she's got details and a great idea of what to do with those details. And it's showing up, but it's a little confusing. So Danny, one of the questions that was submitted by our guest ahead of time was, looking at the chart and maybe looking at some themes to collectively think about ideas and like what direction to go in i'm giving holistically the things that annoy this manifester the most so i'm hoping that this is <laughs> I love diagnostically yeah. helpful this is perfect yeah it's di again diagnosis hun diagnosis kara it's it's just <laughs> We love, right? Humans want to love. When was the last time you wanted to kill somebody, like literally, or or, or you don't? That's not what humanity is yeah, about. Yeah, it's not. I mean, <laughs> I'm not talking about those moments when I wring someone's neck. I'm talking about like literally, and and then we don't. Well, usually it's like I'm mad at myself. Like, <laughs> sorry, right. Kitty. Like, Kitty, I love you. Down. <laughs> I'm gonna, that's going to happen a couple of times, apparently. He's up here on my stuff. Um, so that that um, gate 62 with all of the, it's, it's the gate of details. And it's the, um, it's the voice in the, in the throat center that has its opinion. It has a logical opinion, essentially. And, but it doesn't always have the concept factory from above gate 17. That is this gate of opinions. The opinions need the details to come out as a logical direction for humanity to marshal itself and make logical systems. You have to wait till that flows through. You don't always have it in the now, the full on formed opinion you have the details. So that's why sometimes when people put you on the spot to because they think you're a natural at it because you always appear as a natural, that's what the two four does. We'll, you, I'm a two four as well. We're a little natural, shiny little natural, and we're like, mm -hmm, maybe. I, I hope. I hope so. You know, we don't always <laughs> know. These three missing gates between the throat and the ashna give a lot of pause for you to understand why they don't always come out. It's not your fault, nor is it a problem. They're waiting. They're special timing, and you'll know because you'll be making an impact. As soon as you can tell you're not making an impact. You're trying to bridge these split gates, these gates that don't have the gate on the other side. You're trying to invent them and they're not there. And so the being starts to become who they're not. You're not all the polished opinions that has the perfect insight that can totally stimulate everyone with exactly what needs to be said until you're just being yourself. And at the moment of calling, the impact is there. And suddenly all those things transcend themselves naturally. If you try to make this, here's where a manifestor can't initiate. You can't initiate that. You have to surrender and react to the timing. So I see some it, jaw it, dropping. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like catching up in my head. Like, okay. <laughs> Let's talk so about like, that head for a minute because we all got the yeah, manifestor because part. The manifestor part's easy now because you've seen it a lot. That head. Do you have a question about the head center? Because I want to go through this a little bit. Yeah, because like I know I have like defined head and Ajna, and I like I see that, but I'm also like I feel like I'm really open minded. So is that where you like are. those open channels are? You're wicked open minded about all this stuff because abstraction, the channel of abstraction, where confusion turns into realization. If you don't know that's what's going on, it just feels like oppressiveness. I'm constantly confused. I'm always overthinking things. That gate 47 is called the gate of oppression because it's oppressive until you have a realization. You know, and that's the thing. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. So it's so, like I have all these like pieces, but until pieces. I get some kind of inspiration yeah. or something coming through, it like clicks and then I it can like. Clicks. Say it. It clicks in. Then okay. you can explain it with all the details and great ideas. Let's go with your strengths. Okay. Details, explanations, yeah. and ideas. They can't always get out until the confusion factory has done its thing and it comes to a realization. Those realizations are profound. They're like, oh my God, I realize. And it's profound. Yeah. Yeah, you want to pick up the phone and tell your friend and knock your boyfriend over the head. That's what the podcast is. Just That's get on the, the horn. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
that's when the details can be explained through the creativeness of ideas and through the creativeness of the realization that came out of the confusion and through the creativity that is the doubt on the other side gate 63 is doubt it's a lot to doubt things is logical we will continue to doubt it's supposed to be that way so when people tell you Oh, Cara, God, you're always, you know, God, there's so many details I got to go through with you just to get you to stop doubting something and come stop thinking, which you think too much, you know, learn to meditate, girl. Well, this design doesn't necessarily <laughs> meditate very easily. Maybe you do, but it was a challenge. Uh, oh, yeah. True? It's been years in the making that I could even meditate at all. And I'm, I enjoy it now, but it took, it literally was years before I was right. like and able to. Quiet. <laughs> do, you remember feeling, do you remember feeling stupid because you couldn't meditate yes. at first? You weren't yes. stupid. Yeah. You weren't stupid. Your, your instructor <laughs> was. Your instructor was. Not her fault or his fault or whatever. But but they were the ones that were, and they weren't stupid. I take that back. They just didn't know, you know, because they think everyone, you clear the mind. No, the open head people, you clear your mind. You're good at that. Us, we're busy thinking. In fact, we're busy putting those thoughts in you because someone's got to do it. Only 30% of the planet has a defined head ashna. That's oh, it. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So <laughs> we're technically doing the thinking for everyone else as it relates to abstract ideas that are going to turn into formulas, opinions, and sudden knowings. These are the things that the mind is doing for us. Doesn't make it right. I'm just saying it's the action of doing it. Doesn't mean the open head people don't have things that show up that are right. It's just that those ideas knowings and opinions and sudden processes that the busy brains of 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 us went through we're the ones pumping that out you sit in a line suddenly you put an idea in someone else's head you don't know what you did they went a different direction you'll have no idea neither do they but we did it it's not our fault it doesn't make us good doesn't make us bad it's just something that's going on so until and look at where's the unconscious gate in this in this head center when you look at the head Ajna configuration, we're looking at one, two, three, one, two, three, four gates. One of them's unconscious. Which one is it? Is it 47? It is 47. That means the oppressiveness of the of the conceptual factory that is the Ajna. The Ajna is here to make concepts. The head centers there are just pressuring the making of the concepts. That's all. So the pressure of doubt, the pressure of confusion, all gets funneled through this 47. And that 47 means I am oppressed with too many things because the abstract channel is creative and it is experiential and it's meant to be abstract for a reason. And what it does is it puts, it's like film, it's like a thousand little film clips. Take the beautiful film in the old cinema, throw it up in the air and chop it all up. We're never gonna be able to watch that film again. However, the abstract being with this channel has all those film clips settled in there. You're constantly putting them back together in separate ways. Oh, look at the movies this way. Oh, that movie's a little demented. Oh, this movie's really sweet. Oh, that movie's like a mess. I don't even know what that is. Oh, I now know what it is. I just had a realization because I put a bunch of things together. And um, yeah, that, that part makes a lot of sense because I feel like a lot of times, especially like recently, since I've been more into like, human design and like astrology and just trying to see all these different patterns. Like I'll pick up pieces here and there, but then it's like all at once stuff will click. And I'm like, I like feel like I have to take time to like process it. Cause it's like so much at once sometimes, but it's like right, collecting right. these little pieces of evidence along the way. Right. And those little pieces keep getting added up. And you ever notice you're too confused to put all the pieces together. Most of the time yeah. until you have the realization. When that realization shows up, it's powerful. You've just added something new to the matrix, to the to here on earth. And it is quite new. Now the rest of your form comes in. You're a manifester. That will be of impact to the people who are correct for you. You will impact them. You will move something. Things will become initiated because of that. Your cross of planning will suddenly make it friendly. You're, uh, and, and communal and, and in a community where it's where it's of use to people. You know what I'm saying? And you're there to be supportive with all of that. So you're doing an important job. You got a busy ass, you know, chart here. There's a lot of definition. You're a busy girl. And at the same time, it's almost a vessel of love in here at the same time. And so you add all that up, that confusion is meant to stay confusing until it comes to a realization. So now you can learn to surrender. It's not oppressive. 
You know you're confused. That's the black line. You know you have doubts. That's the black line, the 63 and the 64. Why isn't it solving itself? Why isn't it solving itself? Surrender, my child. It solves itself because it's unconscious. The solving comes out of a tunnel, not on your timing, on the timing of the vehicle, the body and its chemistry. And suddenly, what, a <laughs> what? So now you can surrender. By the way, my configuration is identical to this as it relates to the top part, except it's my 64 that's unconscious and my 47 that's conscious. So I know I'm oh, always wow. working. I know I'm always working on the on the realization. I'm going to realize something soon. I got to have this thing. It's so confusing. I can't think of anything. I'm just confused. When I finally surrendered to the fact that. Someone says, Dan, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, no, I'm confused. Oh, let me help you. Don't you try and help me. Get on my head. Um, or say <laughs> something if you want, but don't be mad when I don't listen to it because I'm busy being confused. Confusion. <laughs> what was that Chinese guy's name? Confucius? That wasn't an accident. The confusion is this divine experience that brings everything to the table and allows you to suddenly, miraculously come to the awareness that assuages the doubt and realizes for the rest of us what the amazing idea that has backed with details that's about to get explained. That's you. That's who you yeah. are. You're not, and no you're pressure. not, you're nothing else as it relates to that. You're not all the other things you might try and lump onto that. So that give yourself crazy and keep the oppressiveness there. As soon as you don't surrender to the oppressiveness of being confused and not having the realization yet. As soon as you don't surrender to that, it will stay. When you do surrender to that and say, oh, I'm just, no, I'm just oppressed a little bit for a while. Don't be oppressed, Kara. We love you. What could, you can't help me. You can <laughs> just, just love me and give me my space and don't try to influence me. That's your favorite thing. Yeah. Don't, influence me. don't tell me what to do. Don't, I'm a second line. I'm a hermit. I'm in yeah. a little shell. Don't try to influence me. I'll tell you when I'm influenced. And when the right yeah, comes, you'll be called and you'll make the podcast and you'll take the job and you'll make the impact in all of the things that are supposed to happen out of this manifestor body of yours. Remember, the body informs the mind, even though the mind is doing all this work of going through doubt and confusion and coming up with realization. It's still God's work in its own way. And it's still the body's chemistry. It's not a mental construct. It's the body's chemistry, even though it's happening in the brain and all that. Um, so this is the beauty of you and you're doing this strategically. So when strategically you can't come to the right realization, rest, my child, surrender to the little inner Buddha that says, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> when, will, when will you know, Kara? Apparently when I know, that's when you'll know. So, so does it make sense of... that my podcast doesn't have a schedule now? So it's <laughs> it's oh, supposed right. to wait for the inspiration. Right. Until it does. And when it has a schedule, if you help create the schedule, that schedule is going to be loaded with details, well explained, covering all the ideas and getting rid of all the doubts that needed to get rid of. If not all of them, it'll be a work in progress that you'll totally be able to flow with. Yeah. So learn to trust this. Headed that direction. <laughs> trust that. Trust that confusion not being solved. Just trust it and be like, oh, my God, I'm about to get wicked intelligent because something's going to pour out sooner or later. Something's going to pour out. And when you really trust it, you'll be like, there's only ever weeks in between these things, days, hours, sometimes just a few minutes. Unless it's for profound, profound things, relationships do this to us. It could take a whole year to understand. But if you're getting mad in a relationship, it's no good for you. If you can't make an impact in that relationship, it's no good for you. If they don't want to hear you, it's no good for you. Moving on to your emotional definition is what I'm doing. Um, it's all <laughs> unconscious. So holistically, you're this emotional being that has a 1222 that that is so passionate. It wants its romance. Please give me romance. Please make me know that I want this. If I don't want it, I can't even tell if there's a romance or a passion or something worth listening to. I will be melancholic. I don't feel like listening to you. There's nothing worth listening to. There's nothing worth saying. When you find yourself in that position... That's not the right man for you or girl or what, whichever way that works for you. You know, that's not the right relationship. Um, same thing with work. Same thing with your way through this world. This unconscious channel, remember, it's unconscious. You have a hard time identifying with being emotional, moody, melancholic. But you are <laughs> all the time. And you don't even oh, want to admit uh... it. 
Right. Feeling <laughs> called out. Feeling called out. I, uh, huh? this, are, is, uh, are this is pretty <laughs> rude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Kelly, you don't care. You're perfect. You're perfect. It's, it's, you don't, trust me, you don't care. Ultimately, do you truly? Yeah. Need? No, I do. I love it. I love it. I love yeah. having something that can be like, hey, here's what's up. Here's why you right. are the way you are. <laughs> And so moody melancholic means that you have to be in the mood because the manifesting channel you have here more than anything, you have one manifesting channel, 1222. You have one truly manifesting voice. Motors don't connect to anything else as it relates to getting to that voice, to that throat center. 12 says, I know I can if I'm in the mood. It's a voice. I know I can if I'm in the mood. And that's what it says. By the way, strategic people write things down. You keep writing. Um, <laughs> it's true. No, we, I'm we also Virgo. Write, <laughs> no, we, we need you to write it down because right, the, the right arrowed people don't write stuff down. Um, this is true. Not, I never write stuff down. I'm like, we, yeah, we, if we, it's we, important, it's in there. <laughs> no, strategic people, they write stuff down. They got the same notebook. They keep it in order. We write stuff down and we lose it. And it's on a sticky. And we don't go back <laughs> to it. You know, um, anyway, so. And we need that. It's a yin and yang balance. We always need it um, with either side being the yin and the yang. Anyways, this moody, melancholic want, it says want. So here's something that you know that will make you confused until you come to the realization that you want it. If you're not coming to realizations that you want it, then then let that be a powerful keynote. Want. Do I, I, I can't tell if I want. You'll know if you want because... The manifesting channel and that manifesting voice will say, I know I can. I never mind, I know I can. I can. I am. I am doing because I know I can do because I'm now in the mood. This is all recording, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Unlike our very and first stream. Recording. <laughs> which God. which was such on... a bummer. We lost that first stream. So we'll have uh. to repeat that again no, at no, some I'm not point. Repeating are you guys going to put this in a podcast form too I at some so. point at some point when okay. i have the the manpower right so, now um, it's me. yeah yeah no until until then don't you dare moana i can't have you burning out you do as little as you possibly can please because that <laughs> that's keeps the nicest thing you could have ever said to me right. i know like that sounds wonderful <laughs> Well, how else do we respect our non-sacral beings unless we say things like this? Because I want your impact. Your impact is far more important than your slavery, um, far more. And we think we want the slavery out of the worker, don't we? We don't. Um, we want their love. We want their way to be honored, period. So now you need to know, now you get to know, I can't tell when I'm in the mood. It's unconscious. I can't tell until it comes out of a tunnel. Remember the black, well, understand. The black lines, activations, are what we know. They're like the road. We can sit by the roadside and interact with that road. We can see the cars going by. We can see the participants. We can see there's a bend up ahead. The red lines are like a tunnel. We can't see what's coming out of that tunnel. And when you're in the tunnel, you can't see what's about to happen on the way out. All you see is a little light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> But Such a when great analogy. Oh my gosh. But when I you're know, sitting like... on the road, yes. So when you're sitting on the roadside watching, you can't tell what's going to come out of that tunnel. You can tell what's on the road because you're seeing it. That's the personality black lines. The red lines, unconscious design side, that which the body was imprinted with, the physical body, 88 degrees of the sun prior to birth, that stuff comes out of a tunnel. And as it comes out of a tunnel, you can't know. It's a little old lady on a tricycle. It's Godzilla. It's a couple <laughs> of tandem trucks. What is it? Is it a biker gang? Who, who is it? It's a, it's a, it's a pride parade holding. It, it's the peace marchers holding up traffic because they're protecting the environment. Who knows what's coming out of that tunnel? You can't tell until it emerges. That's the point. Surrender to that. Just like gate 47, you don't know when the realization shows up. It emerges out of nowhere in a moment so like since that 1222 is unconscious and you said it's like my strongest or only i can't it remember how you described it it's the only channel right the only manifesting, manifesting channel, channel. yep that's so like what does that mean do i need to like talk about how i'm feeling well, or let, like, me practice. Yeah. let me practice i think i got it because i'm like oh. 
in yes, student huh? mode while he's going on on his teaching. So yes, from the what apprentice. <laughs> Please, the apprentice wants. To... Okay, so you can again add on if uh, you think I haven't <laughs> sufficiently. Start talking, Mariana. Start talking. Okay, so what makes a manifester a manifester is the motorized throat, and what that means is we have a throat connected to a motor center. So you are an emotional manifester, which means your motor is your solar plexus to your throat. That's the connection. So your connection, the only connection to your throat coming out of your solar plexus that's direct is your 1222. So when it means manifesting channel, that means it's the channel of your throat. Because manifestation comes in the human design realm from when you speak stuff out loud. Does yeah, so I get that part, but I'm like, mm -hmm. the 1222 part, how does that mm -hmm. apply to this? Let's get like, to the what does that it. mean? Can I get, can I take over? Do you want to say a little more? Well, uh, uh, again, this is, this is me just like paraphrasing what I think I understand. So the 1222 part is that is your connection right it could have been any other configuration but for you specifically it's 1222 and the thing that makes it interesting is that it's all unconscious it's not it yeah and i i guess i'm just what like does that mean? what is you the 1222 yeah like i want to know like, what does that, that exact channel me? mean that danny can take yes. exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Mariana. i needed that um so I'm 12, a pop -up. 1222 is a channel of openness. It's a design of an emotional being, a being that planes along in an emotional wave, not knowing if they're in the mood for sure until they are. And when they are, they suddenly can. It's based on 22 is the gate of called grace. It's the gate of listening. It's about the grace to physically listen to the other which you hate doing sometimes because you're a manifester and you just want to finish their sentence for them and hurry up and talk. Is that true? You recognize uh, that, right? Sometimes, yeah. And I'm just yeah, like, okay. I'm literally trying to go back to school to for counseling. <laughs> so no, I'm no. just like. <laughs> Never go back to a counselor again. Come here because you are your own no, counselor. No, I'm like talking about me healer. being the counselor. Oh. <laughs> Not oh, me okay. going. <laughs> oh, the, please go to counseling school and bring this <laughs> with you so that you can actually heal people instead of not. Um, yeah. Um, that would be the goal. <laughs> what it's doing is the emotional wave here is trying to find where it is emotionally at peace and feeling clear so that what it manifests, suddenly what it knows it can do, it does. And it can't know until it hears the right things. This is the gate of, of, the, of our hearing. This is the 22 is the gate of the left ear. And it's hearing emotionally, did I like it? Was that smooth? Does that fit what I want? Does it feel good? This is the channel of feelings in a, in a way because it wants to feel. This channel wants to feel deeply. And if it doesn't, if there is no grace to be had because the person isn't listening and you don't want to listen to them anymore, then you cannot manifest a meaningful relationship with them. It will not happen. And suddenly that mood goes down. And when it starts to go down, the emotions here go do what the emotional wave is supposed to do. It cycles between pain and, and pleasure, uh, uh, happy and sad. It cycles between, you know, joy and despair. It cycles up and down. And because this is a manifesting channel in you, it will plane along and be sort of even. But you're aware that, oh, my God, I always have these emotional things. I don't know when they're going to happen because they come out of a tunnel. They don't, I'm not, I don't see it coming as it relates to my moods, as it relates to, I really care about this person. Do I want to hear what they're saying? Does it feel good to me? These are all questions that keep going on. And suddenly your confusion factory feels oppressed. And now you think you're overthinking it. You're not really overthinking it. You're just starting to witness that, that emotional down into certain amounts of despair makes you more intelligent. It's not bad. We've been, it's a cycle between happy and sad. We've been taught sad is bad. Oh, you're sad. What's the matter, honey? People will say our parents love us. They want to help you. What's the matter? Honey? If they saw your design and knew, right, they wouldn't say what's the matter. They would say, I see you're sad, sweetie. If I'm your dad, I'd be like, no, honey, you're just sad. It just means you're about to get smarter real soon. You could have internalized that as a four and five and six year old and been like, 
been through that cycle in minutes. So where now as we're adults all conditioned, it takes a year to get through that cycle or a month or a week or days, you would have been far more attuned to getting through those cycles quickly because going down into from hope to despair. When you go down into that despair, and please do not try to deny the despair part of your life. You have it sometimes, and it's correct for you. Yeah. And it's correct <laughs> for you. When you get down there, have you noticed it never, never stays? You always come back up. Yeah. Sooner or later. So yeah. you got this 35 or six or whatever years on this planet, it has never not come back up. Now you can yeah. know through the diagnostic mechanics of the chemistry ordained by your genome from birth. You know, so you can't change it. It's there. Just like your hair is blonde and your eyes are whatever color. And you're a girl. You can't change those things. That's how you were born. This is there too. And so every time you go down, you can start to realize, oh, I realize it came out of a tunnel. I still hate it because I'm going down. And it feels disparate. And it feels sad. And I don't like it. But I guess I'm about to get smarter and it's going to come back up. And yeah, suddenly, that's been that's, me this past like year or two has been exactly that going through that tunnel. <laughs> right. Suddenly you start to realize quickly, you will start to realize this is a powerful tool. Now I know I still hate it, but as I get better at it, I hate it less. And as I get better at it, it moves quicker. And as I get better at it, I can start to see and come to realizations as to what this is really going to make me smarter about. And suddenly the wave shortens up. And the intelligence heightens. The emotional wave and the chemistry of our emotional solar plex is something that humanity, the forces and the gods, or whatever you want to call that, has decided humanity has to come to peace with because half of us have it and half of us don't. And it's about the only thing that's split basically 50 50 right down the line. The cl next closest thing is sort of the G center, which would make sense. But this half of us that have it, you start to realize as you go down, you get more emotionally intelligent. And the half of us that don't have it are here to experience that emotional intelligence. It's called clarity. It's the one keynote that supersedes them all and fits it. It's called clarity. And it's not perfection. We'll leave logic and the spleen to come up with forms of I know and perfection and guaranteed. Clarity isn't there to give us a guarantee. It's there to give us mostly. Because we're plenty good at navigating with mostly. Hey, you got enough money to do that? Well, mostly. Well, we're doing it anyways. Let's go. You know, hey, do you know all the details to get the whole thing done? Mostly. We'll pick up the rest on the way, right? We do that as humans. We're good at that. Mostly. Sometimes it's really clear. Don't get me wrong. But very often it's mostly clear. And until you feel clear, you haven't gone up, down, and back up again. That's what the cycle gives us. It's the process of emotional clarity and awareness over time in a wave. And that wave cycles up and down through hope and pain. That hope and pain is really, if you were a child, it would just be like good and bad. Up, you Actually, even more benign. You could just call it, oh, it's up and down. And if the parents of the child with an emotional definition are explaining that to them in childlike terms, the kid later and when they go to school, no, I'm just going up and down. It's great. And that's how they would see it. Oh, it's perfect. Well, you seem really sad. No, I am really sad. And I want to cut your head off right now. Leave me alone. Don't try to influence me. But I'm okay. It's great. You see what I'm saying? What power yeah, that yeah. is. And that's where you're supposed to be. And that's where you will be as you put this into your experiment. And for God's sakes, don't avoid it or deny it. Because that's the natural tendency. Because what have we learned in all the conditioning in the world? Sadness is bad. You're always supposed to be up. You're a manifester. You're supposed to do, do, do. Well, you know, when you're not in the mood, you're not supposed to do. And the one channel that defines you as a manifester says unconsciously out of a tunnel, you will find out when you're in the mood. That's pretty uh, abstract. And that's pretty much undefinite. You can't bank on it and you can't stick it in your calendar. Right? So it's yeah. off-putting. It's off-putting and the desire is to deny it. Oh, no, no, that's not me. You know, I'm good. I'm, I'm like, that. Yeah, oh, I worked on that last year. I'm all good now. No. Yeah, if, if, you know, you're dead if that's true. Uh, you're not self and you're a non-playable character if that's true. And you're not a non-playable character. You're seeing this. You will find you laugh at it. I can't believe what I thought I thought I was about to do. I wasn't clear on that. I'm not doing that. I'm glad I, I waited. 
the motto of the emotional is no truth in the now on anything of consequence. You know, when again, when it comes to, you know, what brand of toothpaste you're going to buy, well, even that can be an emotional decision, but mostly it's not. So you don't need to wait. Oh, yeah. That's that's another thing I wrote down, the impact list that you right. mentioned, like making a list of who's impacted by your decision when it's like a big decision or whatever. When it's a bit, especially the bigger the decision, the more you make. And then that helps you get to clarity because emotionally, you may not emotionally be ready to quit that job. That doesn't mean you're weak. It just means that you're not clear yet. You don't know who you're going to impact. Maybe your best friend is there and you're like, no, I'm not willing. And you're very supportive. You're emotional supportive. you got this beautiful ego there. You're not ready to stop that. You're going to make sure they're they're good before you move on. That's okay for you. That's not you being a pushover and a chump. That's you living out your design. You will never suffer for, for having been supportive to the other. You will only suffer when they're not supportive back and you stayed in it. Did you miss some of that while you were playing with your earbuds? Because I'll repeat that. Oh, I can't hear you. You're turned off. Yeah, we, we lost her sound. But, but did you hear Did you hear that? Yeah. She heard it, but we just can't uh, hear that's her. That's all. All good. So. I was going to roll over. So for a fun fact for everyone who doesn't know, this show would not be happening if Kara didn't get me into human design. She was the one who was like, no, 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 no. You need to look at this. And when I first looked at my body graph, I'm like, it's a bunch of shapes, bunch of numbers, bunch of colored lines. What am I even looking at? This is super confusing. And I was ready to leave it there. I'm like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. And she's like, no, 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 you, you, you got to look into this. Like, you don't understand. Like, this is, this is really good stuff. And then only at her persistence <laughs> did I go back. And then, so I think we mentioned this on our first show. And this is the part that's absolutely tragic because no one has any way of viewing it. Um, is I found Danny through his old channel. And for all of those people who do not know, one of my guilty pleasures is celebrity gossip. I'm a giant chump for it. I can't get enough of it. And Danny did a reading on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And I'm like, oh, this is so juicy. It's I one wish of the I readings had a that got me kicked off, off, by the way. It's one of the readings I'm quite sure that got me kicked off. It was those the royal family. We can blame the those, royal family. Those guys don't want me spilling their stuff live on YouTube, and I was doing right. it for but all of them. We, and then I realized we, they didn't like it. We exist Whatever. because of that. So it's Kara getting me into it, and then there's Danny doing things that got him in trouble, and all of that beautifully <laughs> <laughs> came together <laughs> to make this channel. So I am super excited to do a thing that I um, we did on our first show, where we look at both my chart, and this time it's uh, Kara, our guest, and you can tell us in what ways do we work well together and in what ways can we improve and whatever else you think we should know well i was nowhere near done with her chart but that'll go oh, on sorry. for a while Kara, yeah. can i read for you offline after we're yeah i would love that yeah yeah Absolutely. because it's the juice we have to get into we can never just stay on the surface we got to get to the juice yeah the things that are well and clearly i love the juice right it's in my right. chart <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, you do. Well, so when I put your two charts together, so you know what, Kara, by the way, thank you. So you impacted the stubborn one over here and you got her to, to move. I love that. <laughs> well, you are four one. You don't move unless we, someone makes you. Oh, um, really? I didn't know that. I thought I was a pushover. Juxta, ju well, well, that too, in certain ways, but not to actually do a thing, to fake doing a thing. Um, fake doing a thing, got it. So anyways, we're looking at this chart that picture's in the way you've got a right arrow on your head center right uh, I, I mean in the personality that top arrow underneath the number six is yeah that person to the right anyway what am i looking at here when i put these two charts together well first of all the things that we fill in for the other so right now um when it comes to emotional clarity and emotional awareness you guys fill in this whole stream 
tribal stream, stream that is very sensitive to the commitments it's going to make. So you guys have to realize you got to make the right commitments to each other. Don't make half-ass commitments to each other. If you do, it's a recipe for both y'all getting pissed at each other sooner or later. Which, by the <laughs> way, if you get pissed at each other, just recognize that's okay. Don't ever allow yourself to think you think you're actually don't like the other. It's not. You're just not going to work together if that's what happens. Allow it and stop putting reasons and making it personal. It's not. Neither one of you is a jerk. Both of you are you. Um, so it, I'm just saying this out loud because you've already been along far enough to where you might accidentally have made the wrong commitments to each other. That's all I'm getting at. Um, have you think you've made the right commitments to each other or you don't know yet? I mean, I think it's been the right commitments. It seems to be going well. <laughs> uh, uh, Moana, do you feel the same? It depends on how I'm feeling. Okay. Well, so you guys should talk about that. And and you guys can do this. You guys can impact each other by enumerating the commitments. Don't shy away from enumerating them and pick a small list so that you're not making a detail list because you with all the details over here and her with all the experiential wave going on might make like a thousand details and it's too much. So <laughs> That's pick too much. Three. That sounds like us. <laughs> Overcommit, overcommit. <laughs> pick a couple of things that are commitments you are making and decide that you are or are not making them. So that because it'll it's listen, it's just as easy as we're waking up to our nature. It takes seven years to decondition all the cells in our bodies out of the old way into what we truly are. Don't think this happens overnight. What happens mm -hmm. overnight is seeing it and being excited and starting to wake up and in the first year of doing this, you're so much farther ahead and healthier, but it does take seven years for the actual cellular conditioning to go away. And I hope everyone on this podcast here recognizes how important the water of the cells are. I mean, it holds memory. It's that's, that's, that's just true. So make those commitments, decide on the two or three easiest ones and decide, can you live with them? It's wicked important. It's wicked important for you, Kara, because this ego you have, the ego you have is prone to suddenly being a slave to doing the work. So you've learned to shy away from being a slave to doing the work. That's what the channel of community 3740 does. It says, I'm the nihilist. I'm going to do the work. I feel called you, but I don't feel called enough. So I'm going to fake doing the work by accident on purpose, sort of. And here comes... And here comes the open ego person that just agrees. Oh, I'll do all the work. I'll try to do all the work. I think I want to do all the work and she doesn't want to do any Ooh. of it. Both of you. Oh, so the... called out. You're yeah. Not... <laughs> Guys, I hope you're, I'm glad you're laughing at it. It's, yeah, it's just... I mean, it is hilarious. <laughs> it's freaking hilarious, dude. It's a freaking comedy show. It's a fucking <laughs> shit show if we let it be. And it's a beautiful symphony of, oh, my God, I'm, I'm not going to let my friend do this to herself or to me. And you'll both do that for each other. Okay. Keynoted with find two or three commitments you are willing to abide by. Period. Keep it simple so that you don't have to go through a bunch of confusion. You don't have to go through a bunch of not knowing. You don't have to go through a bunch of pressure. Because right now, as it stands, um. Uh, Moana will put you under pressure, Kara. She's got a defined route. I feel that. Okay. Route. <laughs> there you are, open yeah, route. you do. That's not, That's not my I pressure. I like to think of it as grounding. <laughs> I know. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, it is grounding is the thing. That pressure is incredibly grounding as she helps keep the pressure field steady. But with an op you're you're just as likely to amplify that pressure into too much pressure and losing track of trying to be in a hurry. So suddenly yeah. Moana comes along with the thing to do. Hey, can we do this thing? And suddenly your day is in a hurry to get rid of the pressure of do I want to do that? I don't even know if I'm in the mood to do that. Moana, you have to ask her, hey, have you thought, are you clear? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, this is good. Yeah, I'm like, okay. This, so this, Moana, now Moana. I know. I had no idea. I'm like, are you in the mood? You're no, not? Okay, cool. And, circle and, back when you are. 
Well, the thing is, and then, and then Kara, it's up to you to recognize you don't know when you're going to be in the mood to whatever. So you then have to preempt it. Don't wait for Moana to come back. She's a manifester. She'll come back. She's trying to make an impact. She's doing. And part of the doing will be come back to you. So if you don't know you're in the mood, the next day say, Mo Moana, I can't tell when I'm going to be in the mood for this. So Moana is off of red alert trying to get you. She does it to me, by the way, and she puts me under fucking pressure. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> So, hey, pick up your phone. Yes. What? Pick up your phone. yes. So from yesterday's missed call, and I realized I missed call until today's call, I was under pressure. When is Moana going to call me? And I'm going to have to now do something. I don't feel like I'm a 2-4 like you. I don't, I don't feel like I'm not in the mood. I have a gate 12 that knows it can or not if it's in the mood, just like you do. I have a gate 16 that is or isn't enthusiastic. I have a gate 20. I have these gates that you have. I understand them all too well. We're all self-absorbed, concerned with our own little trip in the now. Leave me the hell alone, mostly. Except call me out when I want to be excited and keep me involved because I don't want to lose out. That's a conundrum. And the only way to get through it is for Moana's pressure to be allowed so that you can then turn back in and say, hey, I'm feeling under pressure and I can't tell if I'm in the mood or I'm totally in the mood. We're doing this. Biatch, get your freaking headphones on. We're going live. Whatever it is. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because those moments will come too. So Moana, you're looking to see when does Kara really feel called? And Kara, you're looking to see, I don't have to worry about my, my confusion on it all. I feel called. I'm just going to power through or not. Remember, I know I can or not. All the, vo all the voices of the throat have or not to it. Actually, all the gates have or not to it. I know I'll be supportive or not. I know I'm in the mood or not. So you both got to get in the habit of just open the book and look at each other's gates and ask them the or not of the question about any one of their gates so that they can find out if it is the or not part. See, we as humans think our old seven-centered way wants us to, to only strategically think we're always supposed to be in the mood and we're always supposed to, where there is no or not. It's always is and we're on. Because that's what they taught us in seven centered bullshit school. Um, <laughs> and, it needs to be on a t shirt. Yeah. Seven centered and, and bullshit, bullshit, bullshit school. school. Yeah. I'm from the hard school of bullshit, seven centered bullshit hard knocks because it is hard. <laughs> knocks. And back to you, you need to understand she's got, um, Moana, um, <clears throat> Kara's got an incredibly experimental way. You're loaded with all these third lines, you got third line nodes on both sides. Um, is that, am I reading that right? Yeah, third line, 63, oh, no. no, they're all third lines. The third line is experimental, experiential, it's bumping into it, it's making, it's making its trial and error process turn into something that becomes, always gets back up. So you knock Kara down and she's like, I'm staying down, I'm staying the hell out, I don't want anything to do with those people, but her nodes say, oh, I gotta get back up, I'm getting back up, I'm moving back into the thing. And you wonder why you sustain. And then you wonder why you pain yourself over having sustained at a thing. You've got to realize sometimes I'm not in the mood to sustain. My impactor is done impacting. It's freaking tired. It's done. I'm going to my confusion, my confusion home where I'm happy reading a book and then doing something else and then playing my instrument and then getting on the computer and then calling my boyfriend and then hanging up when I don't want to hear what he has to say anymore. And that's perfect for you. And Moana is like, hey, I don't really have that going on with me. I'm getting stuff done. I have nodes that are second line nodes. I get called into things and I love that. I'm sometimes a little role model. I'm doing all these things. I'm trying to experience this new way with clear amounts of pressure. I don't put myself under pressure. I make the pressure. I'm good with the pressure. Let her be good with her pressure. Don't take it personally. Moana's not putting you under pressure. You're not under any pressure. You have an open root center. There is no pressure. Now, I tell you there's no pressure. Do you believe me? No. No. <laughs> because it's brand new to your experiment. That's not your pressure. Do you know how hard it is for me to sit there and tell someone else, hey, that's not my pressure? No, because I have an open root too. Not my pressure. What do you mean it's not your yeah. pressure? Not my pressure. I'm living through it. And what becomes wi the wisdom, Kara, for us is the wisdom of the recognition of what is the right pressure for us. Because every once in a while, because of that 
channel that's manifesting and the romance and the and the passion that comes through there when it is in the mood and it knows it can do suddenly it's the right pressure for you i was wondering danny so what is what how does her defined ego and my completely open ego affect each other you have to not concern yourself that the defined ego roars it roars, it leaps, it fights, it wants to it, it wants to leap into things, it needs to control certain things. Mm. You have to not care. You've got nothing to prove. Okay. And the and she's under no pressure. So as soon as you feel like you'd have to do more because you have to prove something, that's your open ego trying to compete with the defined ego accidentally. We open egos are constantly competing with the defined egos. We didn't know we were doing uh, it. So is that what you were meaning by like, oh, I'll just do everything. It's fine. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so when you're in the mood and suddenly you're generating that sprinter speed of the, uh, when you're manifesting that sprinter speed of the manifester, please do keep doing. You love that. But you've been in your experiment long enough to know you're about to rest and to see it a little bit in advance and obey her she is she is mother earth she is the true yin your rest inside of you is a is half the yin that you need to know obey her i thought yeah. you were saying obey Kara, and i'm like no. well she is mostly defined i guess <laughs> no, you, not, no obey the rest the, uh, the rest <laughs> no, Kara, Kara, that. <laughs> you only obey Kara. you guys end up being obedient to each other for wherever yes, you're going to fly and so, so I would about. ask both of you to surrender to this to this term of obedience, we'll call it, but please nine centered, awake and aware, communal obedience, not seven centered bullshit, freaking obedience like a slave. The obedience is to the honoring. We're, we're obedient to honoring the other is really the best way to put that. And that's yeah. proper. So wherever your strengths lie, one of the things you should do with each other is is attempt to find out where the strengths are going to be so you see what these just one or two or three commitments you're going to make no more no more than three make a holy trinity of commitments to each other no more and then see if you keep them and no blame if you don't blame shame and guilt is the old way that's the bullshit old school just be like i guess it was the wrong commitment we didn't know now we do that's okay okay or it's the right commitment it's working we're killing it one of those two things will show up and both of them are just in the awareness of how you guys operate as manifestors becomes the ability to not be mad at the other guy if it doesn't work how many times is oh that was suck they're stupid i'm not but that and suddenly we think we have a negative view of the other that's bullshit. we don't we don't want to we just see ah oh, they weren't in the mood oh they that wasn't the right thing for them oh you know what she's not emotionally clear and so it's not going to work. And I'm talking to both of you on that. You're both emotionally defined. Um, and it's it's the wrong pressure. Uh, it's the wrong thing. Uh, it's the wrong set of, of variables. Or it's the right set. You'll find out as you start to do this when you come up with one, two, or three commitments you're willing to make. The second line wants the second line individual would like to keep it small at one, and the four one profile investigating would like to at least try two or three. So you guys can <laughs> roll. Sounds right about right. Let's put on. I let's know. try this other thing. Let's try this other thing. I don't know, man. Yes. I don't know, man. Are you uh, sure you don't know? Well, no. You see what we just did? We just refereed a thing that could have been a big fat problem. The second line is always going to try and do less. Essentially, it's always going to because it doesn't know. <laughs> it's dude. Think about what the second line. I'm busy learning this thing. Don't tell me what to do. Don't. I don't want to hear it. You're talking. Stop talking to me. I love you, but I'm only pretending to listen. See the head's nodding, but it's empty up here. I'm someplace else. And Kara is prone to that. You've got to not dislike yourself for it. So other people start talking. Everyone's got an idea, right? Everyone's got opinions. Everyone's got stuff. And suddenly you're only open. The grace to listen in your body graph is only open long enough to catch. Are you still in the mood for it? And after that, you start tuning out and the nodding. Could both of you all, we're all fourth lines here. The fourth line abdicates. It's polite. It's friendly. It wants to keep the people in the network. It's never going to be out and out rude unless it really has to be. You know what I mean? And that's them. And that's usually fighting words. You know, struggling fighting words. Other than that, we're we're not. Yeah, no, I I understand. We're always saying, and it's not untrue. We do understand. We just don't want to. 
The second line, don't want it. We don't want it. We've got this beautiful shell around us. And you're a manifester, so it's a double shell. Keeping mm. protected from the influence of others, especially as it relates to intimacies. It's intimate to be in a relationship with Moana because <clears throat> you have to do stuff. That's an intimacy. Hey, I'm a little private about all that. I'm in a shell. You're going to have to scratch my shell and pull me out so I can be called. <laughs> and when you're called, you'll do all the right things. It's hard to work with a 2-4 at, at first because we don't necessarily know. And plus, we'll say what's good when we don't know if it's good. And it's until we awaken to our design. Hey, I don't know if it's good. I'm a Hey, design. but I'm. Ch yeah, I don't That's know. That's our channel good. name, if you didn't remember, Danny. That's what we recorded. <laughs> yeah, no, we recorded it because I don't remember what I just said. I have no idea. I, I just, <laughs> you just said the channel name without even realizing it. Awaken to your design. It's like, but um, oh, that's our design. That's our channel that? name. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Um, I can't. That tell needs to be clipped. That's that's that another... would be a genius clip. Yeah. Hear, probably... Listen to Danny's talk about our channel without even knowing he just talked about our channel. Well, that's what we're trying to do is we need to awaken to this thing, and we need to give our second line hermits all the space in the world to take the time to come out of our little hermit shell and say, "Okay, I'll be called or not." You know, because to try and hurry that person along is to get the abdicator in the fourth line that just says, "Yes, okay," when we didn't really mean it, or we didn't mean it enough. Mm. And because you guys are both emotional, each and every one of your decisions should not be based on speed because all manifestors want to go fast. You guys are all like the Ricky Bobby story. I want to go fast. You know, you all want to go fast, but you're emotional. So, and you're making decisions about a project you're working on, whatever, I don't even know what it is, but whatever it is, you're making decisions. Why don't you guys say, hey, well, listen, we're going to try and make this commitment. Here's a couple commitments. And then the other one will say, well, I have this idea for one. Okay, now let's think about it. We'll reconvene in a week or a few days or or tomorrow or whatever. And and we'll and do reconvene even when you don't still don't know if that's the case. Because maybe you will know. Maybe you'll say, I still don't know, but enough time's gone by. I need to at least try to make this commitment to this aspect of this project. And if I if I'm good at it, great. And if I'm only medium at it, let's just run with it because maybe I'll I'll decide to get better. And if I really don't want to do it, that's a sign. This might not be the right project for us. We don't know yet. Allow this don't know. Both of you are loaded down with, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the unexpected over here is don't know what feeling she's going to have. That's you, Moana. The um, the hermit over here that is the, the channel of planning is like, if I have to plan something, that's a big deal. I'm about to spend my life doing it because I don't do anything well until I am called. The calling is like the priest. You know, I'm going to go into the jungle and tame the savages, even though none of my brothers and sisters ever come back because we all get killed. But the calling is so strong, they still go do the thing. The kamikaze, the person who is, I'm picking drastic things, you know, <laughs> something less drastic, but it's the person who is called. And, and you have to be called or else you're not in the right environment. You've got a gate 21 in your body graph, Kara. That means you have to be in a certain amount of control of your environment, period. Oh, and you already know that. And let me look at your guys' electromagnetics. Where do you guys electromagnify each other? Or compromised, me... either or. <laughs> do you know what a compromised channel is, Tara? No. You guys have no electromagnetics. Wow. What is 45 and... Really? What's 45? What does that mean? 45 and 21, does that mean it completes? She doesn't have a 45. Wait, who are we talking about? Me We're talking or... about you. Neither one of you. Oh, already. wait. Sorry. I don't know what I was looking at. Sorry. <laughs> I think it, maybe you were looking at... Is that your Phillip's husband's chart? Does he have a 45? Maybe that's what see. you were looking at. Off the throat center. It would connect he with He does. Your yes, he does. I, he oh, does have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, I'll deal with that when I speak to you offline because that is one of the things. Yes. That is one of your electromagnetics. It's a point of love and hate between you and he. Um, so but it's no zero electromagnetics. So then what? Is that bad? No, it's perfect because we never actually hate hate. It's just annoyance. But it's a point mm. where the flame and the fire and the passion actually gets. It's a thing. It's I love electromagnetics. That's where people connect. People really find that. Connection. 
but and but and like so, we can still connect, right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have the opposite have centers. So yeah. what I see here in your design is there are lots of little compromise points. So what it really means is figure out your commitments you're going to make and then break your separate corners. Well, where are the compromise channels? I point them you out. You have a 22 and she has the whole 12 22. Right. Moana. Okay. Moana, yeah. You have a 47. She has the whole 40, a 64 47. Um, you have a gate 10. She has the 2010, the whole thing. Um, she has have, more channels than I do. Is what yeah, I'm you have a gate 37. <laughs> you have a gate. 30, so you're beautiful with affection and listening, Moana. You're the listening. You're the affectionate listener. She's got the whole channel. 3740 do, does the work. And these all come in as potential compromises if you actually had to live together. That you don't uh, have to live okay, together. I saw them. You just have like you rattled them roommates? off. No, yeah. no, we've never met in person. Perfect. Yeah, so, um, we're online besties. <laughs> yeah, no, stay online besties. If you try to move in together, um, make sure you're well into your experiment three, four, five years because you'll drive each other crazy because there's a lot of compromise here. Um, mm. Potentially, uh, until you awaken to your nature. Nothing matters when you're awake to your nature, just so you know. And awake to your nature is seven years later because all those freaking cells in your body literally deconditioned themselves and, mm. and recreated themselves anew and awake. I realize we think awakeness is, is a mental construct and it's our awareness that is a big part of it. But the cells in our body are carrying the vibration of the old way that's not awake to its nature and it's and it's always not self, angry, not self, bitter, frustrated, overthinking, and thinking it thinks it thinks it knows the truth. It cannot. The only thing that knows the truth is the chemistry and the feelings. The clarity of no truth in the now for both of you, that's a feeling, that's a chemistry, and it shows up then as true because it's clear. So you guys both get to get clear over time in the now, I mean, in the now later, as it clarity shows up and what you can do to be supportive to each other, because you have an incredible harmony. We both have, a, all three of us have a fourth line. We want to network with the other. We want to see what opportunities do show up. Moana's gonna investigate like there's no tomorrow. Let her, the little natural inside of you that doesn't know if it knows that it knows it's any good at anything will get called and then it knows. And, and it's up to you, Moana, to not project upon her that she is a natural into something she doesn't know if she's a natural at. And it's up to you not to burn her out with investigating this and investigating that. She'll investigate what the impactor feels like investigating. And you'll both become clear that it was correct uh, a week later as you reconvene. I would suggest one of the commitments you make to each other is that you will continue to reconvene until you figure out what commitments are going to be right. And then I make like that. That is really yeah, good. I feel like we already we do that. You probably are, but now you'll do We've it with been. a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, just like make Reframe. it a regular thing to reconvene. Just keep yeah. talking. It's pretty regular. It's pretty regular. No, I mean like back when you were not working, like we had it on a calendar all the time. Yeah, I still feel like we're I mean, I can't do it um, weekly is kind of hard, but like yeah. we do it pretty consistently. You know, That's, like that I talk to like, you more than almost anybody else, dude. Oh, okay, <laughs> Danny, I have a bone to pick with her. She called me her highest maintenance friend. I'm like, what? Oh. I'm just being real. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm still enjoying that moment I just got off of. That was intense. So I'm, I'm <laughs> like, a not cigarette. high maintenance. Danny, tell me I'm not high maintenance. You're not high maintenance. You're wonderful. I well, don't change. You're perfect. Yeah, in a bad way. I just mean no. like I interact with her daily, and I don't. I, there's not a lot of people that I interact with daily. It's what's well, not a bad thing. <laughs> It's not your high maintenance, Moana. What you are is your maintenance because you have a defined route. You create the pressure field and the pressure oh. literally is about maintaining things. Don't forget oh. that pressure's adrenaline. It's striking a balance between fear and trust. It's there to keep a steady adrenalized flame going. Interesting. Uh, that's all new to me. I'm like, huh, so that's what the root is doing. Like keeping... The flame constant. 
pressure. keep the thing going pressure through a, your adrenal right uh-huh. and so every time i see a phone call come through i'm under pressure <laughs> just know that oh let me put the you can you know what play with it i don't need anything i just want to put you under pressure dan and laugh at it i'll be fine with that i love that stuff. i had I, I had nothing to to get from you i just wanted to see if you'd pick up yeah 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 right right oh my god i, 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 I did trust you me, opened a can of worms because i will do that do that <laughs> poke the bear moana you're good at that you're experiencing that i want your emotional clarity over what is it you poked at trust me it's actually healthy this is how we commune we don't take ourselves too seriously and commune take it out of the religious aspect and put it in just the human commune just means i want the other to be themselves and if there's things i don't like about it or annoyed or whatever i'll just go back <laughs> to myself for a moment and, and, and you know you're already you know just whatever the phone call will end it's no big deal it's it's not personal and we have to stop taking ourselves so seriously about certain things we don't know what do we know? We're just sitting here bobbing along on the ocean like everybody <laughs> else. What by being ourselves and not giving a crap that we are ourselves. We have those limitations. We have these things. It's not your pressure, Kara. You've got nothing to prove, Moana. You don't need to look for love and direction, Moana. You don't need to find out what the bridging gates are into your body graph. They'll automatically show up in the right timing, Kara. I don't need to have, feel like I have to prove anything or feel safe or whatever, blah, 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 for my open centers. You know, that's not my pressure. It's so, it's hard to say it's not my pressure, but now you can start saying that's not my pressure. Yeah, you feel find the right pressure for you, just like I do with Moana. And Moana, sometimes you'll be like, hey, you want to do the next thing? And I'll tell you, Moana, I'm losing it. I'm not in the mood anymore. I want to leave. I'll just tell you, I don't want to talk or something. Yeah, I'll say it out yeah, loud. yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be like, I have to do a thing. I'm like, okay, cool. We're, we're done now. Yes, because because my second line, dude, our second lines, you have to realize, has this feature. It's this, um, it's called the bigot. And it's not a big, it's not bigoted at race and anything like that. It's so up close and personal to us. The bigotry is in what the other is saying. We have a tolerance at a certain point, we come bigoted towards what they're saying and we don't want to listen anymore. We have to accept that about ourselves. That's a lot it's of not, line twos. I just counted them up. She's loaded end, line twos. She's there's loaded. There's like six. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them. And you're <laughs> all very, lot. very twoey. Very, very twoey and very three. Very, very twoey. <laughs> very twoey and three. So it's like this tension inside of you because part of you sustains and wants to keep moving. And the other part of you is like, no, I need to hermit myself. I'm fatigued. My, my fourth line is fatigued and my second line doesn't want to hear it anymore. And I need to go into my shell. <laughs> That's why this little room you're in, I notice. Yeah, for anyone room. who was who was like wondering what two E and three means, we're looking at the points. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I five can count them. The personality, and a total of six in the body graph. That's that's uh, that's. There's a lot of two going on there, so it just means the personality is weighted with a lot of two energy. That's the hermit. The 40 says I'm the nihilist. The 30 says I am affectionate. The 37, the the um 46 says, Oh, I'm a little prima donna. I'm gonna get what I want the way I need it, or I'm not doing it. I have a 46 <laughs> line too, just like you do. I have a lot of the same gates you do. The 62 line two says, I think I have all the details. They're being called out of me. Watch, I'm speaking them. I didn't know I had them all, but they're there now. Um, that's what second lines do. Um, uh the 21 line two, we already went over that. So Embrace them. Open what your book. What do those little and... arrows mean next to that? Like well, little just, arrows pointing little, up? That they, that they tend to be fixed towards the exaltation when you read the book, or they tend to be fixed towards the detriment when you read the book. They're perfect. Love your detriments. Oh. I have detriments. We all have them. And they, they look wow. detriments. Are, yeah, detriments are like the, um like a little bit of vinegar. Tell me a salad dressing okay. is any good with olive oil and no 